Hi, I'm Ari Lynette, and today we're making history. Well, my history. <laughs> because today's video is my first ever collaboration on my channel. I'm really excited to be finally getting into collaborating more, and this is something I'd like to continue throughout the year and collaborate with some people I really love. So today's video is a collaboration with one of my friends here on YouTube, the lovely Amy Living in Christmas, and she noticed that I would got the Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette in my June roundup. That palette is here, and she said that she had that palette too, and she asked if we could collaborate with an idea to do with this palette. So I thought, yes, absolutely, let's go for it. And we were thinking of some ideas of what we could do with this palette, and something I suggested, at first I thought was a little bit of a weird idea, but really warmed to as I was thinking about it, was the challenge of using as many shadows as possible in this palette on an eye look. Because this isn't the kind of thing where you can get, like, the most versatile looks. There are a lot of things that can kind of blend together, and I just thought, what if you had this giant Voltron combination of eyeshadows on, but could make it look good? Me, I just thought that that was something really interesting to consider, and she seemed to really like the idea, so today I will be doing an eye look using as many of these shades as possible. I'm not going to jump the gun and say I'm going to use all of the shades and be amazing at it, because let's be honest, I'm fine at what I do, but I can't work miracles. But we're both going to try our best to create a really nice look using as many of these eyeshadows as possible. So we've got cool tone neutrals, we've got more mid-range neutrals, we have pinks, we have a purple, we have a grey. We've got a lot to work with, but I think that there could be something really good to come out of this because it's a nice palette, smells wonderful, and I just think this challenge is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to see what Amy does with this. Like, I'm really excited to see what she comes up with. Another really fun thing about this video is that I've pretty much done no prep for it. The last time I did a video like this where I have no prep for my look, it turned out to be one of my best videos because I just had so much fun doing it and just kind of on the fly planning a look. I just enjoyed it so much, and that's the kind of enjoyment I'm wanting to get out of this. So if you want to see me try my darndest to include as many shadows as possible on my eyes in this video, then do not go anywhere. Right, so I'm going to start with the eye I usually do for my tutorials, because I find that it's just easier when holding a mirror and using the brushes to do it on this eye on camera, and then do it on this eye off camera. I have an arsenal of brushes, which I'm going to dip into and see what I can do in order to get as much of this palette as possible onto these peepers. So to start... I'm going to do something I don't usually do, and I just feel like I need to neutralise this base a little bit, so I'm going to take my first shade, which is this one, Cashew Chew, and I'm just going to really try and go over this and just create a nice, more neutral base. It actually acts as a really, really nice subtle transition, which I really like. It's very subtle, but it's exactly what the look needs. So now we're going to go into what I thought was the first transition, but it's probably the second transition because I think that this really stands out on its own. I'm going to take Almond Truffle, this shade here, I'm going to just pop this on the outer part of the crease as the early transition. I need to go a little bit lighter, just something nice and soft, not too intimidating, just very nice and very subtle. And I think that really works for that position. I'm already getting an idea, maybe put some of the warmer shades on the outside and then focus some of the cooler shades on the inside. So I'm going to take a little touch of Pecan Praline and I'm going to pop this in the inner part of the crease and just I don't really know if that's done very much. Tiny bit more, maybe. Really fuse those together a little bit. And it's created something. Not too shabby. I don't think it's the most exciting transition, but I mean, it's cool neutrals. There's only so much you're going to get. So I'm just really distracted by my highlight. I'm wearing the Colourpop Becky G Princessa highlight, and I really like how it's looking. <clears throat> so, out of the shades so far, we've used Almond Truffle, Cashew Chew, and Pecan Praline, and that's just for this buffer transition, and we haven't even gone onto the lower lash line yet. So next, I'm going to add Mocha here as the next transition. I'm going to take a slightly more detailed brush, and just put this on the outer part of the lid. God, I really love that. And then I'm just going to blend over that a little bit. 
seems a little bit mall. My sister's been telling me to blend a lot, so I'm gonna follow her advice, because she knows more than me. She should probably be the one with the YouTube channel, but that's besides the point. I am actually going to take a little bit of that same shade, Mocha, and just hop it with a smaller brush on the inner part. Like, this works really nicely in the crease. God, I really underestimated the power of this shade. I'm also going to go in with Bordeaux with that same smaller brush and take a tiny bit on the outer crease and just ever so slightly deepen it and just run that all through the crease lightly enough but also so it's present. I don't know what is it with me today but I just want to blend even more. So what's next? So we went in with Bordeaux, I'm going to deepen it up even more with this shade here, Malted. Going in with that same smaller brush, and I just want to take this. I know this is really good for deepening, so I'm going to start popping it here and just connecting it to the lid a little bit more. While also blending it in the crease, because there's still a lot of benefits to blending that in the crease. But I think this is just the start of really getting that onto the lid and just introducing a little bit of darkness and depth. So I'm going to put it in here. It's like that one little trick I do because I like creating a very sharp contrast. I think it just works really nicely for a look like this. I don't want it to get too muddy. I'm a little concerned that it might be looking slightly too muddy. God, I'm really enjoying that. So probably the darkest out of the brown shades is this shimmer called Dark Truffle. And I'm going to really concentrate it on the inner parts of those junctions to the lid. I don't know why I'm going with like road terminology, but it just makes sense. You can see like right here, it's just adding that little bit of depth. So it's really pigmented. So it does a good job of it. It's almost a little bit too pigmented. Yeah, we're gonna need a little bit more blending. So right now we're creating this quite distinctive line, and what I want to do is introduce some of the more colourful elements onto the lower lash line. So I'm going to start with black currant, which is over here, and connect this into this wing portion. Just a little bit. And it's just a little bit of subtle purple. I think it just works for what it is. It's a nice little touch of that purple. So far, this is actually turning out a lot less messy than I was expecting it to be, but we still got a little bit to go. It could get worse. So, lower lash line. I am going to start off with cotton candy, have a nice little pink moment, distributing this quite evenly across the lower lash line. And you want it to blend with the purple really lay nicely, and I'm really loving how this is turning out. Now don't get me wrong, I like how this is turning out, but I think we could go a little bit brighter. So we are going to take this bright eye-catching pink called Totally Fetch. It's like one of the first colours you notice when you look in this palette. I'm going to take this on a smaller brush, and I'm going to put this closer to the lower lash line, and just really concentrate this more. I do want to make sure I'm not blocking my face with the palette, but that's just a very strong touch. <laughs> I almost think that it would have been better had it going the other way around now, but I still think this is great. We've added those two pops of pink on this palette here, and we've added the purple, and I just think it's a really nice inclusion that isn't too brash, but it's got a little bit of jazz. You like jazz? So on the inner corner, I'm going to go in with Sprinkles here, which is quite neutral, but it just leans to more of a pink, peachier tone. So I think this will work really nicely on the inner corner. And just blend it into the existing pink. A little bit of pop of light, but it also makes sense within the look. And then we have some more shimmers on here, which I think the lid is prime real estate for. So what we are going to do first I think it makes sense to start off with this shade, Molasses Chip, and take a little bit of this on the outer portions of this lid space so we can put a lighter shade in the middle of it. So I'm going to take that, yep, that's exactly the tone I'm wanting, and just pat this on this outer part, which is almost at the middle of the lid, but just enough to start a little bit of contrast in 
just create a nice little halo eye. I'm also gonna take a tiny little bit in the inner portion. And then for this center of the lid, I'm going to take Cafe Au Lait, or however you'd like to pronounce it. I'm not saying my French is infallible, but I like to think I got that right. But this is a little bit more of a cooler tone shade and it's even brighter. Do you see that difference between the brightness? That's exactly, yes, that's exactly what I was getting at. It is very nice looking so far. If you want to, you can do a little bit of finger action and that just creates a little bit more of a flowing gradient. I think I'm going to reintroduce a tiny little bit of Bordeaux and I'm going to take a little bit more of that just to deepen up this crease ever so slightly. This is looking snazzy. So we have all of the smaller pans except for one actually and that's what I'm going to do next. The last of these smaller heart shaped pans to include as far as I can tell is Earl Grey which I thought was more of a dark blue but it's actually more of a traditional grey. I said in my June roundup that this was a really really pigmented shade so I'm going to only work with a little bit of it but I'm just going to use it to line the upper lash line and I'm going to be really careful because I'm very bad with my application of any kind of lash line dark shade. Just a little touch of it just so it really makes that lash line pop and that's just enough to make the lashes pop a little bit more it's just a nice little distinct touch so those are all of those heart shaped pans and now we've just got the two big pans to include so i'm going to start by highlighting the brow bone in two different ways because i feel like it could use two different ways First off, I'm going to take Divinity, which is this matte, and just highlight the brow bone and just make it a little bit more known. By the way, this shade is so, so pigmented, which is, sounds like a massive stereotype, but it just really is a good shade. If you want that brightness reintroduced, it's really good for that reason. Just a little bit of a little bit in the inner portion too, just to brighten everything up. Ooh, that's looking good. I'm actually going to take an extra brush for this next part. So I'm going to take, this is what I'd use for a more detailed, precise highlighter. This is actually what I used today for this Becky G highlighter. I'm gonna give it a quick color switch just so none of this gorgeousness ends up on a look which is supposed to just feature this palette. Though to be fair, you could probably incorporate other palettes if you wanted to, but for this challenge, I just wanna go with this palette. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking this top big pan called Satin Sheets and I'm using this to highlight the brow bone. And by highlight, I don't just mean brighten, I don't just mean add that lightness. I mean sparkle. I mean dazzling. I mean a nice brow bone highlight. If I wanted to, I could add this to the inner corner also, but I think that Sprinkles is doing a good enough job on its own. It's just showing off the texture on my eye. <laughs> I can't really help that, that's just me. Me and my terrible skincare routine. But if I'm getting this right, oh my goodness. My challenge was to use as many shades as possible and I managed to slap all of the shades on my eye. So I'm going to do this on the other eye and then I'll be right back and I'll probably be wearing a lipstick as well. Stay tuned. Approximately 10 hours later. Right, so while I was doing my other eye, I decided to get myself a beverage. But as you can see, I've done my other eye. I've also got some mascara on and it's actually looking passable today. So that's good. And I've also got a lipstick on. This is one of the Revolution re lipsticks that got released during Halloween. I don't think you can get this one anymore, but it, you might be able to get it if probably on the Revolution Beauty website, but no guarantees. If you go on the website and you can't find it, then don't, please don't attack me. I was not built for confrontation. But this is what I've created with the Bonbons palette. And honestly, I actually really love this look. I was looking at this palette and thinking if I put all of these shades together it'd probably look like an absolute mess. So I was only really banking on just putting in as many as possible so that the look would make sense. But lo and behold, I put on all of these shades and it's actually created something quite nice. I think because this palette does have such a close knit colour scheme that it's really focused on cool tones and more neutral tones but it has those little expeditions into colour. It can create a quite cohesive look when you put all of those elements together. So I think that that's something quite beneficial about this palette. I doubt I'd be able to do something like this with some of my other palettes. As much as I love those palettes and I think they're amazing, I probably couldn't put all of those shades on my eyes. 
it would look like an absolute cloud explosion and not the good kind. But there you go, that is my using as many shadows in the palette challenge featuring the Too Faced Chuckle Bonbons palette. I can't wait to see what Amy did with this palette. So now that you've watched my video, make sure that you check out Amy's video on her channel and I will leave that in the description because I'm sure she's created something really awesome with this palette and then I'm sure we'll be discussing what we thought of each other's looks and I can't wait to see what she's created. So if you would like to give something like this a go, feel free because it's a lot of fun trying to put all of these shades onto the eye without losing it. I think everyone should give it a go one day. But that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, thank you to Amy Living and Chrysalis for asking me to collaborate, and I've just had so much fun doing this, so thank you so much. This means a lot to me as this is my first collaboration video, and I've just really had a good experience. I don't think I would have had this any other way. So thank you. And thank you for watching, regardless of who you are. I've been Ari Lynette, you've been amazing. And try not to fit too many eyeshadows on. Unless you can do it well, then feel free. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and come say hi in the comments. You can find me on Twitter at Ari Network and on Instagram at Ari Lynette. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Love you for watching.